And here's your question. It is a general concern that after debate, council will make a decision, but instead of supporting the decision with one voice, other council members continue the debate. Where do, we, where do each of you stand on this issue? Brian, after you. Well, I can speak to my own ability to communicate. Uh, I, I've, I've chaired a number of committees. I participate on a number of committees. Uh, I've worked in rooms like that before. Uh, that when the team makes a decision, they have to stick to that decision. You have to communicate, you have to share your issues, and you have to be able to come out of the room collectively if you're voting on an issue where the majority rules. So in the past, we've seen it. We've seen it repeatedly. I'm the type of person and I'm the type of professional that not only gets along, but shares candidly, shares straightforward with people, and communicates very well. And I expect that from the fellow councillors if I'm elected. Thank you. Ira, after you. I think part of the problem, certainly from what I've experienced, is that something will come along that sounds great. And everybody says, yeah, let's do that. And, then, and, and, that, and that's what happens. They say, yes, let's do that. And then they start thinking about it. And then they start figuring who's going to pay for this. And all of a sudden, opinions start to change. So I think what we need to do as counselors and moving forward is to, have, is to make sure that we have all the pertinent information before we make the big decisions. Millions and millions of dollars is not something that you just say, hey, it sounds great, let's do it. We need to think about making sure that we have all the information, and then those things will stop. Thank you. Sandy, after you. Thank you. Well, I often call myself a governance nerd. I, I take governance very seriously. I'm actually a graduate, a chartered director from DeGroote School of Business, and I have served as the chair of the board for a $2.5 billion credit union. And so I do have high experience in governance. And what I've learned, especially being the chair of the board, is that in order to have highly effective meetings and highly effective functioning, you need to have a clear and compelling vision. And that's generally the, the role of a chair, and in this case, it would be a mayor. So I certainly hope that we will elect a mayor in this term that will provide us with that clear and compelling vision and with leadership. And so that we do do as Brian, that we have, it, we have the, the, the debate, the intense dialogue, we hash it out, we come to a solid decision, and then we leave it on the ice. I can use a sports analogy as well. But certainly, in order to have highly effective meetings of, the, of our councillors and to have an effective running of the city, we need to ensure that we're all wanting the same kind of things for our city, that we have a vision that is inspiring and that in some ways keeps all of the city council singing off of the same song sheet. Thank and so you. I ho hope to see that with our Thank new you, council Sandy. and our new... Thank you. Aiden, after you. I believe in unity, but I do not believe in unity at any cost. Ideally, all of council can agree on important matters. However, as a general matter of principle, if council takes a decision that I think is bad, whether it's bad for the economy or bad for human rights or bad for my neighborhood, I'm not going to be a trained seal clapping and supporting it. And I'm sure my opponents wouldn't be either. I think that we need to have a restoration of civility within our council. We can have passionate debate and passionate disagreement and yet respect one another. An extremely important principle that we need to bring back to our council is the following. Acknowledge the good in what your opponent is saying. That has to be the starting point for any conversation. And then when you disagree with your opponent, whether it's in the context of city council or whether it's in the context of hashing out our, our very local disagreements as neighborhood associations and as a ward, when we start our disagreements by acknowledging all the good and all Thank of the you, integrity Aiden. in our opponents, Thank you. I do feel bad about cutting people off, I'm, just so everybody knows. All right, maybe I don't, but. It means I get to press buttons, and I'm an engineer, so. Tony, after you. Yes. If I'm elected, I would like to bring more respect at City Council. Unfortunately, uh, there's no team effort right now. The decision making, it's not on behalf of the taxpayer of Hamilton. It's just 
wastage. Sometimes they do decision on one-to-one, -one, they, uh, they don't think of the taxpayer. Long-term version decision is needed at City Hall, and I can help with that. Thank you. Jason, after you. Thank you. So um, I think one thing we desperately need on council is a lot more decorum. I don't know if anybody watched the live feed of the last council meeting and saw all of the uh, off microphone chatter that uh, Joey Coleman's mic was picking up on his live feed, but uh, it was quite disrespectful. Uh, to say nothing of projectile writing instruments in the past, but um, I think <laughs> I think we need to restore a lot of decorum to council, uh, and I plan to be a big part of that. Uh, second to the point that was raised earlier uh, is that part of the challenge with um, council making good decisions and sticking to them is the massive amounts of information involved. Again, back to you, Joy, but I've seen the stacks of agendas that are required to be read, and a big part of the problem is that counselors often only get those agendas 48 hours in advance. That needs to change. There needs to be adequate time to digest that information. Uh, and the final thing is, I'm only gonna support motions or decisions made by council that are in the best interest of my ward. Um, if somebody wants to raise a speed limit on Maine to 90 kilometers an hour, I'm not getting behind that. So I'm, I'm here to represent the, the people of Ward 1 and the citizens of Ward 1. And Thank that's you, what Jason. I intend to do. Thank you.